Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss another pattern, uh, which is linked with the master data services, because what I'm going to do, uh, beside discussing the cloud and, and uh, other patterns and the architectures and the model that we, we're going to learn uh, from, from the data engineering uh, perspective, and you know, even from the, from the data platform perspective as well, uh, we'll also look at some of the pattern that can definitely help you in your in your jobs or in your business if you want to you know implement some automation in your business that can execute the job uh, uh, based on based on the value which is business uh, business is driving now what i mean for that I, uh, in order to discuss that i have created a, a scenario where we have you know a different kind of person type and we want to load the data automatically once those person types are available or the respective data is available in the database for, for that particular person type. And today I'm going to show you how, how that will work, how we can uh, Run the ETL package uh, based on based on the uh, based on the input that business is driving. So now you can see how the business is controlling the whole data flow, and the the execution is only happening on on the on the uh, IT side. So that will shift the ownership towards the business. Uh, because they need to uh, mention, okay, that person type is available uh, in the in the source, so it can uh, 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 move into into the into the destination uh, uh, database. Uh, just out of interest, uh, I have used uh, our source database in the in the on premises, and we are targeting the database in the cloud. So we're gonna see a practical demo uh, today, where we're gonna actually load the data from on premises to Azure Cloud uh, database which is obviously Azure SQL, and you will see how we can control it. So without wasting any time, let's jump straight in the, into the lab environment. All right, let me quickly first go to, through the scenario. Uh, let me come back first to our uh, MDS model. What I have done, I have actually created uh, an MDS table. And I'm assuming that table is controlled by the business. So I am uh, at the moment. Uh, oops, I click on the person type. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually look at different person type that uh, we have created into into my. Uh, MDS model uh, into the entity. And if you remember the concept, entity is nothing but it's more like a table that can contain the data in the in the tabular fashion and business can use it within the Excel environment. They can come into the uh, web interface and they can enter uh, uh, these value or they can go and use the MDS plugin within the Excel environment. And I think in my last videos, I have shown uh, how you can use uh, uh, the, the, the plugin within the Excel, you have to install it so you can easily download from from the <coughs> excuse me from the Microsoft website. Uh, so you can see uh, we uh, the same values are available in, in in here, and you can see only one value has the status. And the concept is that okay, whatever employee type uh, person type uh, has the corresponding status one, only that uh, type is going to be loaded uh, into into our uh, our target database. So let me first run without any uh, without any value so you can see once we run our ETL package it's not gonna do anything let me publish it so right now nothing is available for for loading so if I come in here let me first show you uh, the 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 uh, the uh, source and destination. Uh, my source is my local database I have created analytica dev and it has a couple of tables uh you can see we have some feature mart uh and i'm going to discuss the feature mart in the in the future video uh, some really interesting interesting concept you can see the user table book table and book rating table is there because we don't gonna do some practical machine learning work you know uh, i was always surprised that is, is it a way we can you know provide provide the benefits of machine learning to a common user who's using you know the database uh, world and who is not you know, uh, familiar with our, all these deep mathematics and Python and all these technologies. 
is there a way we can use within the SQL environment? So I'm gonna actually build the whole machine learning uh, models within within the SQL environment, and we're gonna feed them through through the uh, through the uh, through the SQL table all the data, and we see how it actually play uh, uh, play the role for for us. But before that, what we got right now in this video, we are targeting uh, MDS. So what I'm gonna show you, we have that person uh, information, and let me show you the person information. You can see we have a person type. And let me just, you know. And by the way, if you're not familiar with SQL, don't worry, I'm just preparing a course for SQL uh, from noise to, to professional. So that will help you to even start from point zero and, and uh, uh, becoming a professional within within the, uh, the, the SQL uh, language. And tell you the truth, uh, one of the major, major skill that you need if you want to become a data engineer and if you really want to excel in the, in the data engineering field, you need to have a very strong grip on, 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 the, on the SQL language because SQL is a language that all these modern, small, medium, and big uh, uh, software, they are all speaking that language. And we will see uh, soon that how SQL is you know, handling all these big data sets who are sitting on, on, the, on the big data cluster and provide us the SQL uh, interface to, to, to talk to them. Now you can see, uh, I have actually distinct the person type and I have multiple person type, which is already available uh, in our MDS. So that, that's our person information. And you can see different person uh, type, uh, types are available in my table. So that, that's my source. Let me show you my target, which is obviously Azure SQL. And if I come in here and let me see if I can, on my cost um, and let me go to my Azure SQL. I haven't gone through the Azure SQL interface, but we will we'll go through in, in a separate video. Uh, but right now you can trust on my word that that's the SQL database which we have created. And let me just key in my password. Yeah, you can see in the table, I have all these table. And uh, let me show you, I'm connecting to the same, same database. By the way, Microsoft is building the web interface to run the query the same way you have these query editors available in, in Azure Synapse. So it's gonna be right now, it's in the preview mode. Microsoft is gonna get the feedback and you know, fix all the issues that they might heard back from, from the community on, on, on the, uh, or the, or the, 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 the users who are using uh, that feature. And then once it gets matured, they're gonna release it. But let me come back into our actual environment and you can see the same four tables are available in here. So our Azure SQL database is available to us just like a normal database, which is a great feature. Like we can just work with our cloud environment. We don't need to worry whether the database is sitting on our local server or within the cloud environment. All we need to, uh, to, to run our script and run our queries and we, uh, if we can get the outcome the same way, uh, the, the hardware or, or the infrastructure is Microsoft job. By saying it, we have a table have, which is a similar in structure as of my source database, and currently it has nothing in it. Now, and I have a package that I've built. By the way, ETL is a completely separate topic. I'm not going to complicate these videos by you know, collecting a lot of things together. So everything is going to be in its own video. So consider at the moment that package has been built and it actually get the, it get the value, whatever active uh, uh, percent type is, and it's gonna actually get the data uh, for that percent type from percent table and it's gonna load it into, into our cloud-based SQL database, which is by the way, a cool thing. So what I'm going to do, let me run it first time without any uh, uh, type because we don't have any. Uh, and without any type, I just put it NA. That means not applicable. 
No, I'm not going to delete it. So we don't have any any type available. So let me run it and let me just show you. Yeah, in our cloud database, we don't have any record. So we are good. Let's run our ETL package. And by the way, later on, once we look at the Azure Data Factory, we will see that if we have packages available or we build in the in the SSIS environment, we can uplift them or we can migrate into into the Azure Data Factory. There are there are patterns available that can help you to to uplift that work, but that that requires a separate a separate series. So the good thing the 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 package has run. Now we come in in here and we see do we have any role? We don't have any role because NA means not applicable, so we don't have any any type. But the 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 thing which I want to show you now, being a business user, I'm driving the whole show. Like I just put the value as one, and uh, the the once I run the ETL package, uh, it is it is uh, just trying to load the percentile and a and dash a, which is obviously not applicable into into the target database. Now, for example. Now I have the target uh, percent type is SC available into, into my source database. Being a business, I know that, okay, the users have key in the, uh, the SC percent type into, into our application and now that data is available. So we want to run the job. Uh, to, to load that data into the cloud. Uh, by the way, you can automate that ETL job because right now as a demo purpose, I'm running it manually. In the very next video, which I'm gonna record after this, I'm gonna automate the whole thing. So imagine the person who is running, uh, who is actually handling that sheet, and that is the Excel file, which is obviously controlled by, by, by the business user. He can drive the whole show whenever the data is available. He can literally control the flow of the data. And imagine we are shifting the, the responsibility from IT shoulder to business shoulder. So you can see how data governance is playing because they are taking our responsibility because they can only uh, change or update this, uh, this table or, or the, the MDS entity. So hopefully that makes any sense. Now I'm going to publish it. Perfect, so we have now SC. Let me first show you what we have in our, that's our source. Person, SC. We have 753 records in our source database, which is sitting on our local server. Now we are going to run these records based on our business logic. Based on that status flag, we know that this is now available to, to load. They are ready to load. Business uh, has given the green signal by changing the status to one. So what we're going to do, let me rerun my package. Awesome, our package has been executed. Instead of going into the SQL Server Management Studio, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight into my cloud environment and I'm going to use that web interface and I'm just going to not person, right? So that, that's the name. Let me run it. Excellent. So you can see we have now the data available into, into our cloud-based database. And I think what I'm going to do, let me count it because I need to make sure, do we have the full data sets? By the way, you can do the same thing in the in the in this uh, SQL management study. I'm just gonna do the same thing in within the SQL environment. We have 753 records. So that means this number is matching to this number. Voila, we have the, the records have been loaded and how we have done it, it's not like we, uh, uh, we load the data. That's the point I want to actually clarify and that that's the pattern if you can actually understand. Business has given us the, the signal by, by uh, using the MDS table and based on that value, we loaded this data into, into our target cloud-based database. Now, later on, 
business has said, okay, we have EM percent type data is available as well. No problem. They have updated uh, the table. And I'm now coming in, in here and I'm going to now reload it. So we let it run. Hopefully it will load another uh, type of person within the cloud environment. And what we're going to do, we're going to come into the cloud environment, we run it. We have 1,206. Now what I can do, let me just type, I just want to, it want to, By the way, if you don't understand SQL at this point, don't worry. At one, uh, very soon, you're gonna uh, see a full course that's gonna help you to to understand the full SQL. So you can see we have 753 record uh, for SC percent type, and we have 273 EM type. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to recheck. So now I'm going to match that number EM, and we have 273. So our data set is complete uh, in all all fashion. And you can see uh, we have discussed in this pattern multiple uh, 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 building blocks of the solution. We load the data from uh, from uh, a local database to our cloud-based SQL uh, database. Uh, we have used the business input to drive the whole show. And obviously, last but not the least, we build the the ETL package that that uh, that is loading this data from from uh, from the local database into into the cloud database why i'm not explaining the etl package at this stage although i can go but that will complicate the i uh, complicate the video i want to keep the video clean i want to keep the video focused on mbs that's why i'm going to record a separate video to explain this etl so thanks for watching and hopefully as you get it will benefit you especially with your job or with your practical requirement because one thing i want to tell you that uh, i'm recording all those videos which will help you uh, later or sooner within your your uh, project or 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 day to day requirement so hopefully that will benefit you thanks for watching again and i'll see you in the next video